we have come to the time where we would share with these your people your word I pray now for my mind father that you would help me to think your thoughts and I pray for my mouth that you would help me to speak your words and then I pray for us to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to each and every one of us. This is our prayer. We pray now in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. We have been laboring for a number of weeks in this sermonic series, getting in line for God's favor. Getting in line for God's favor. The background scripture was Psalms, the fifth division. And we focused in on verse 12. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. God promises in this particular passage to bless the righteous by encircling that person with the favor of God. Three points I want to reiterate, and then we will move forward in this particular area or what God has for us today. Point number one, when God says he will bless the righteous, to be righteous, and I'm saying this over and over and over again, to be righteous is to each and every day purposefully seek and align your will with the will of Almighty God. We do this by prayer. When you get up in the morning, before you start your busy day, pause and pray. Ask God to reveal his will to you as to what he would have you to do. In that, you are sensitizing yourself to the presence of Almighty God. If you get up and you start your day and you forget to pray, when you remember, pause and pray. If it's not until you get ready to go to bed at night and you have forgotten to invite God's will into your life that day and you begin to look back on your day and realize that your day was filled with disappointments and turmoil, ups and downs, don't get discouraged. Repent. Say repent. And make the decision that tomorrow, if God allows us to wake up, I'm going to start my day out the what? Right way. And that is by inviting his will into our lives. We do that through prayer and through obeying the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number two, to be blessed. And he says, I will bless the righteous. To be blessed is to be empowered by God to prosper. I like that. Because when God gives you power to do something, no one can stop you. God wants to empower us to prosper us. Remember, God wants you blessed over and over again in Scripture. God is saying to us that he wants us to be blessed. But the way we are blessed is by choosing 
to walk in his word. When we walk in God's word, obedience always produces blessings. Can you say amen? Obeying his will is what produces the blessings in our lives. And so I would say to you, whenever there is a choice to do it your way or do it God's way, do it God's way. And realize that when you do it God's way, no matter how it looks, God's power and God's blessings will be there for you. Can you say amen? And then point three, what exactly is the favor of God? And this is what we are talking about. And this is what we are saying God is making available to us. The favor of God is him influencing others, influencing others to be kind. Say kind. Yeah, that's a good word, isn't it? To be gracious and helpful to you, to benefit you, to aid you, and to show you partiality for your success. God wants to give you his favor. His favor influenced other folk. Where you are running up against a brick wall, when you have the favor of God, God opens the way for you. He gives you favor. He gives you kindness. And it is demonstrated in the individuals that you deal with. I like that. Amen. Listen, I don't care how good we are. We need the favor of God. And I don't care how smart you are, how bright you are. You need God's favor. And God's favor is available to each and every one of us. God wants to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. Whether you qualify it or not, if you got the favor of God, God will open the door for you. And you'll be able to obtain the thing that you're desiring. Say amen, somebody. So God's favor is available to us. And that is what we must cherish. Now, let me say this. To align ourselves so that we are recipients of the favor of God requires for us to purposely live. By the sum of the law expressed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Please write this down. If you can't remember anything in this sermonic series, and I hope you can, but remember Matthew 7 and 12. So then in everything, treat others. How we, 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 we're talking about other people. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the essence of the law and the writings of the prophets. We say it like this, do unto others as you would have them to what? To do unto you. This is the way we must treat people in order to keep the favor of God in our lives. When we retaliate, when we fight back, when we, we try to even the score, then it cuts us off from the favor of God. And when the favor of God is not in our lives, things become difficult. And so we cannot afford to allow ourselves to get in the gutter with other people. Say amen. We've got to live our lives. Are y'all hearing me? We've got to live our life, and I know this is difficult. God never said it would be easy, but that's what his grace is there for. His grace is there to empower you, to give you a little something extra so that you can do what God is asking you to do. Please listen to me carefully. Many forfeit the favor of God by becoming, listen to the words, offended, by becoming bitter, by becoming spiteful or vengeful 
in response to a perceived, say perceived, wrongdoing against them. When you take offense towards someone, the only person that is ultimately hurting themselves is you. When you become bitter or embittered towards someone, the person that really loses out is you. When you become spiteful or vengeful to the point where you want to get back at someone, the only person that ultimately loses out is you. Because what you do is you cut off God's favor in your life. And yes, you may be able to lash out at somebody and even the score in your own personal mind. You may be able to get back at somebody and that make you feel good temporarily. But I promise you, there is a price to pay for fighting back. Keeping yourself in the favor of God requires us to walk by the following rules, even when the flesh wants to retaliate. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You say, I wish I could get them back. I wish I could do them back. But guess what? There's a price that you pay when you retaliate. And you cannot allow yourself to lose out on the precious gift. What is that? The favor of God. That's when God works on your behalf, even when you sleep. Hallelujah. God got stuff that's working and he's aligning stuff. Why? Because you are are under his favor, and his blessing is following you. Stay with me. No, rule number one. If we're going to stay in the favor of God, we must extend kindness to those who position themselves in your mind as your enemy. Deacon Montgomery, may I, may I share what you have shared with me, the testimony? May I do that? Deacon Montgomery came up to me last week. And he said, Pastor, let me share this with you. And I know I, I won't tell it as good as he told it to me. But he was talking about at his job. And he works with amputees. And he told me that one day he came into his office and there was a hanging noose that had been positioned over his workstation. And, uh, and it really, really took him back. And one of the individuals that was in his office was responsible for this type of act. And, and he could have blew up. And he could have acted unseemly. And perhaps in some people's mind, justifiably. But he chose to take a different path. He chose not to lash out at the individual. He did what he was supposed to do in the sense that he reported it to those who were in authority. He did not try to take the matter into his own hand, catch the guy that evening when he was getting off of work and deal with him in the parking lot. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He chose not to take that kind of response, like some of us. Help, Lord Jesus. I said, what? Help, Lord Jesus. Like some of us perhaps would have done. He did what he was supposed to do. And then later on, they had gathered together and brought him in and talked with him and said, what do you want to do? with this situation. They were at the point where they would have fired that individual at his word. And what he did was he started thinking, he says, well, that man got a family. And that man got kids. And that man has made a mistake. Now, I can either uh, 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 make him pay for the mistake that he made or I can extend, listen to this word, mercy. 
I can extend mercy. And listen to me, when you are in that kind of a situation where you, you have been given a decision to, to purpose, or excuse me, to perhaps uh, cause an individual to lose their job, he chose to respond with mercy. And he told them, he said, listen, let's not, let's not go that route. And we'll, you know, I don't want to see him, you lose his job. And, and I'm sure that, you know, after that, they said, well, if he doesn't want to press charges, uh, we, you know, we'll probably talk to the individual. The individual knew what Brother Deacon Montgomery had did. And that caused him to see Deacon Montgomery in a different light. And, and Deacon Montgomery told me that because he chose kindness instead of trying to retaliate, he says, right now today, when I go to my job, me and that individual pray together every morning. Me and that individual have come together and bonded and become real brothers in Christ. Sometimes blind people need to have the scales removed from their eyes. Listen, God is not about destroying the wicked. God gets no pleasure when the wicked are destroyed. God would rather for somebody to stand in the gap of those who are wicked towards us and not move with retaliation. Thank God for your testimony, brother. I appreciate that. But that drives home the point, what Jesus is trying to teach us. If we're going to stay in the favor of God, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your enemies and hate your, or excuse me, love your, your neighbor and hate your enemies. But Jesus tells us what? To love our what? Enemies. And the way we love our enemies is by extending kindness towards them. So rule number one is to extend kindness to those who position themselves in your mind as your enemy. In doing so, you say, you stay in the will of God and you keep yourself in the favor of God. Now point number two, if we want to stay in the favor of God, if we want God's favor and praise God, <laughs> He shared some other things with me that as a byproduct of him standing in the will of God and having the favor of God, the whole environment has changed towards him. Say amen. And that's exactly what will happen when you choose God's way. Rule number two, if we're going to stay in the favor of God, we've got to bless those who curse you. Hmm. Somebody say, help, Lord. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 5 and 44, but I say unto you, bless them that curse you. And please, please understand Ain't nobody saying this is easy. Say amen. But what we're saying is it is the way God would have us respond. When men hurl hateful and hurting accusations towards you, aimed at disheartening and destroying you, to stay in the favor of God, we cannot respond in the same manner. And if you live for any length of time, somebody is going to curse you. Am I right about it? 
everybody here that is alive that has to deal with people at times we are going to have to deal with insults and accusations we're going to have to deal with hateful and hurting speech directed towards us and when they do that we cannot afford to respond in like manner this ain't no who can cuss out who competition are y'all still with me and i know it takes it takes god to hold yourself doesn't it yeah say say amen but please hear me we are to bless those who curse us now i'm not just talking about somebody come up to you and call you or this and or that but i'm talking about those who are speaking negative towards us also those who are demeaning us and trying to say things to hurt us we cannot respond in like manner and still have the favor of god on us I want you to listen to me carefully because this is, God really dealt with me on this. And he said, now how are you going to do this? How are you going to share this? And I had written out my message and God said, no, go back, tear it up. Because this ain't what I want, want you to say. And I, and, and, and I had originally pre, had it down where, where you need to talk to him. And I want you to understand that sometimes you don't need to say nothing. And God began to take me and show me in his word. He says, God calls for you to bless those who curse you. Now listen to me carefully. To bless those who curse you does not mean we are to say something good about them. Because that may be a lie. Because in all likelihood, they are not doing anything worthy of praise. And when I first read that and first started meditating on it, I said, well, what we're supposed to do when somebody says something bad about us, we're supposed to say something good about them. But that's not at all what he was trying to tell us. He's not trying to tell us to lie because, like I said, sometimes ain't too much good can be said. Are y'all still here? But we bless them in two ways. Number one, we bless them by not responding at all to their cursings and their accusations i said thank you jesus he said listen because somebody cusses you don't mean you got to turn around and give them a response do you understand how hard it is not to say something back somebody say i know what you're talking about pastor Somebody give you a piece of their mind and in the process they hurl some obscene accusations at you. And you want to try to say, say wait, no, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're not going to talk to me. You understand what I'm talking about. That's the man in you that comes out or the woman in you that comes out, right? But God is calling us to a higher level. He's not calling us to respond like other people respond. And sometimes, please get this in your spirit, the way we bless somebody is by not responding at all to their accusations. Now let me show you in the Word. Jesus is our supreme example. Here Jesus is in front of Pilate. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But when the charges were brought against him, Matthew 27 and 12, by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. He didn't say anything. He just stood there as a lamb to the slaughter. And this takes God working in you. 
Come on, say amen. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But Jesus did not reply to him, not even a, to a single accusation, so that the governor was greatly astonished. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23. This is the passage that you've got to get in your spirit. While being reviled and insulted, he did not revile or insult. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. He did not do it in return. While suffering, while putting up with, he made no threats of vengeance. I'm going to get you back. Payback, so you know. And all them kind of stuff, that kind of stuff we say. But he kept entrusting himself to him who judges fairly. When you are put on the spot, and when you are coming under the accusations and insults of people, the way we bless them is by, at times, not responding a word. Now, that takes God working in us. Somebody say amen. But what you've got to do is trust that God will take care of you and not try to fight your own battles. I've learned this in my life. If you try to fight your battles, then God can't, and he won't. Are you listening to me? And if you allow God, and you just entrust yourself to God, and stop trying to respond to their foolish accusations, if you will just trust God, I promise you, God will fight your battle. Now, now here's the wonderful things. He won't use you to do it. God will get somebody else to come in and to fight for you. Now, that's God's what? Favor operating in your life. But as soon as you open your mouth and you start back at that individual, you take yourself out of the favor of God. Now, you can either fight your battles or you can let God do it. If God does it, he'll do it right. Say amen. If you do it, it'll take forever, and, and you'll cause more damage in the long run than was worth it. Are y'all hearing me? So sometimes the right response to bless those who curse you is not to say anything at all. How many of y'all understand that? How many of y'all know that if I just would have kept my mouth closed? Come on, talk to me. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? <coughs> I know what I'm talking about. If I just would have what? But there's something in us. Come on now. Something in us that says, oh, no, you're not going to disrespect me and, you know, all that crazy stuff. You, come on, you know what I'm talking about. But you got to go back and you got to say, God, <clears throat> you might want to talk to God right quick. Listen, <clears throat> God, you need to help me right now. Lord, you, you need to really help me and then turn back and just keep your smile, keep your mouth closed. Because what you want to do is not what you should do. Because what you want to do is your flesh. Am I right? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? 
How many of us would have avoided a big old blow up this morning? Well, yesterday, how about that? Sometimes we need to just be quiet. You can't argue with somebody ain't talking back to you. And then number two, when there are times we must respond, we bless them by saying something good to them. Not saying something good about them, but by saying something good to them. In Zechariah chapter 8, verse 16, the scriptures teach us these are the things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Ephesians 4, 15, Paul picks it up and embraces that and says, but speaking the truth in love. If we must respond, tell the truth. Are y'all hearing me? Don't lie. Don't embellish. Just tell the truth. And speak the truth in love. Now, what do we mean? What do we mean? Stay with me. When we must respond to those who curse or speak at us in a demeaning way, we are to respond to them in a thoughtful and truthful manner. Also, remembering the tone of our response is so important. Say the tone. I'm about ready to close here, but I want you to get this. Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A soft and gentle answer turns away wrath. But harsh and painful and careless words stir up anger. I want you to listen to me. I was talking to an individual. And they told me that they had went to a particular place and they weren't satisfied with the service that they were receiving. And so they said to the individual that was waiting on them, I would like to speak to the manager. And the person turned around and said, well, can I help you with your situation? And the individual said that he said to the person, no, not unless you're the manager. Now, what that did was stir up anger because you could have come at it in a much softer way instead of allowing the testosterone in us to rise up and so <clears throat> the person went off and and you got to remember people are just paying to, they get paid to do a job i mean you know be sympathetic they went and get a manager. <clears throat> and so the, the individual comes out and says, sir, can I help you? And the person said, they said, not unless you're the manager. You can't help me. And the person went on to say, well, I'm the assistant manager. And soon I'll be the manager. Uh, but I'm the assistant manager at this time. And the individual said, well, when you soon become the manager. Then is when you can help me. But until then, you need to fly and get me the manager. Now, when the individual told me that, I shook my head and said, all that does is stir up strife, stir up anger. 
What is the point to it? If you need something rectified and, and you get, you feel you, you are mistreated, there is a right way to respond. Are y'all hearing me? You don't have to try to one-up on somebody. That's, that's not God's way. That is the way of the world. Now, just because you done made everybody, you know, put everybody in their place, and now you the big dog, and you done straightened them out, and you done gave them a piece of your mind, that's not God. All you did was kill the favor of God operating in your life. And you probably got labeled as difficult. Somebody that you don't want to deal with. Let's hurry up and get them up and out and try to avoid them to the best of our ability. All you do is hurt yourself. Are y'all hearing me? So we cannot afford to respond in a smart aleck way. We have to choose soft and gentle words. It turns away wrath by patience and a calm, say calm spirit. Don't let yourself start spiraling out of control. The only thing that happens is your blood pressure going to go up. And before you know it, you're having a stroke. And you're on the floor fighting for your life. Don't respond in like manner. Trust and entrust yourself to God. A soft and gentle tongue breaks the bone of resistance. I mean, you'll know I'm telling the truth. I wasn't going to share this, but I'm going to share it, and then I'll be done. And I'm talking maybe 15, I don't know, years. I can't remember the whole thing, but I do remember you, Minister Murdoch. I remember one time I was upset. This was at the old church when we was in the other building. Long, long time ago. I'm going to say it was 50, at least 50, 60 years ago. I don't know what we were dealing with. I don't know what it was. But I, I said, brother, you know, and I came at my brother. I came at him heated. And he turned around and responded in such a gentle, soft way, I had to immediately stop and check myself. And I said, you know what, brother? I'm sorry. I apologize. What did he do? He responded the God way. And what did he do? He helped me get back. And, and keep things in perspective instead of spiraling out of control. Many times, God wants to use you in those situations. But you got to learn how to respond the right way instead of escalating the situation. God wants you to be that calming spirit. Oh, say amen, somebody. He wants you to be that calming spirit in that situation to de-escalate it. Because in the final analysis, listen, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to be all right. Somebody say amen. How many of y'all know that's the truth? So the next time, and there will be a next time for all of us, when someone curses at you to remain in the favor of God, extend kindness. Don't retaliate. Don't try to hurt them. Position yourselves as the solution to the problem. 
and then bless those who curse you at times by not saying anything at all. And when you do got to talk, speak the truth in love, remembering that the soft answer turns away wrath. Can you say amen? Amen. Close your Bibles. Amen. If men and women who are married to each other would walk in this principle, how harmonious would our relationships be?